Welcome insiders to Jack Inside, I'm your host Eric. So today we're going to be taking a look at my 2014 MacBook Pro. This is the 15 inch, the Retina from 2011 like I said. It has a NVIDIA 750M graphic card as well as the built in Iris Pro by Intel. It has an Intel i7 processor, 2.5 gigahertz, so it's pretty top of the end. You can get a little bit higher like a 2.7 or 2.8 gigahertz CPU, but mine is still pretty good. I also have 16 gigabytes of RAM. And anyway, we're going to be taking a look at exactly how fast is this MacBook Pro since it is pretty much one of the top of the end models. What's the benchmarking of it? How does it perform? Etc. Etc. Well, we're going to start the tests after the intro. Alright, so our first test is just going to be a simple restarting test. I'm going to restart my computer and realize this computer has an SSD or a flash storage in it, so it is just really fast. So restarting, getting to the login page on the Mac, it only took 21 seconds, and that's pretty fast. Even with all the software, all the programs on it, it loads up extremely fast, and then once I log in, it's almost instant when it's there. My question is, how fast actually is the SSD or a flash storage? And I use the Blackmagic Speed Test app, and I tested out the SSDs, and they are extremely fast, up to 700 megabits per second, which is just insane, when my desktop behind me only gets up to around 400 to 500 megabits per second with the dedicated SSD. It's just the fact that the flash storage or SSDs in the MacBook Pro go to PCIe when the computer behind me only uses SATA. Now before we move on, just one last SSD test. This is the SSD stress test. I mean, it's nothing actually technical, but just interesting to see. Basically, I'm going to open up all my applications on my Mac at once and let's see if it freezes up and dies. Anyway though, moving on to some actual serious tests, Geekbench. Now I ran the Geekbench test and I got a score of 12,704 for the multi-thread test, which is really great. And then the single core test was 3,363, which again is pretty nice, pretty fast, I'm not going to complain about it. Moving on now to Synbench. Synbench is one of my favorite benchmarking applications, mostly because I can really see what's doing when it comes to the graphic card test. So quickly mentioning actually the CPU. The CPU got a score of 604. Don't know what that means, don't really care, but yeah. But moving on to the graphic card slash OpenGL test. On the NVIDIA 750M graphic card, I got a score of around 59 frames per second, which is Pretty good, I'm not going to complain about that, that's the fastest speed I've gotten. And just to take in consideration, my 13 inch MacBook Pro only got around 11 or 12 frames per second. So really, this, this computer is really stepping up when it comes to performance. Also taking into consideration that the desktop behind me used to be a Hackintosh and it has a NVIDIA 760 graphic card, a full desktop graphic card, and it has around 82 frames per second when I run the Synbench test which is just insane because that means there only really is a 20 frame per second difference, which yes, that is still a big difference, but it's not really that much of a big difference. And finally, when it comes to the graphics, I also did a test with the Iris Pro integrated graphics that are built into the CPU, and I got a score of 32 frames per second, which yes, is roughly half the performance of the 750. So getting the 750, yes, is kind of worth it depending upon what you're going to be doing. It's basically double the performance, which is just crazy. But it's also crazy how the Iris Pro graphics got 32 frames per second. When, like I mentioned, my MacBook Pro, which has the integrated 3000 chip, my old MacBook Pro, only got a score of around 11 or 12 frames per second. So the integrated cards are really stepping it up. They're not ready to replace discrete graphic cards, but they're slowly improving. And the performance of the Iris Pro graphics shows you that you can manage with it, but depending upon what you're doing, if you're doing light video editing and whatnot, even on like Final Cut or maybe even Premiere or After Effects, it definitely is a worthy card, though it might take some time to load. You might even have some performance issues here and there, but at least it still is 
possible to use it. And with video editing mentioned, let's do a quick video editing test, I guess. Now I edit with Final Cut Pro X as well as Premiere Pro. Don't have Premiere Pro on my Mac right now, so I can't test that out just yet. But we're gonna be testing out Final Cut Pro, which I've discovered is so fast on this computer. I can roughly edit around a one minute video and when I render it out, it renders out in around, well, under a minute. And in this case, it rendered out in 13 seconds. That is just insane. And what I find very interesting is when I, again, ran my Hackintosh behind me, I used, again, Final Cut Pro X. And even though my Hackintosh technically has some better specs, it didn't even perform that fast when it comes to, like, Final Cut. Final Cut would still take roughly around a minute to render out a one minute video. So really I've discovered that the optimization within the Macs are just insane, especially with Final Cut. The fact that Final Cut could render out a clip, a one minute clip in 13 seconds on MacBook Pro is just, I'm just blown by that. It's really fast. All right, so there's the tests and performance of my MacBook Pro from 2014, the late edition. I'm still waiting for the 2015 MacBook Pros to come out to see how fast they actually are compared to this. But this computer is really fast. It should be able to handle 4K video editing. It can even handle some gaming. If you want me to do any more tests, you can let me know in the comment section below. I know Macs aren't for gaming, so please don't give me hate for that. But if you want to see, I guess, some gaming tests of it to see how well it can actually handle games, especially with its big screen, let me know in the comment section below. Any more benchmarks you want me to do, again, let me know in the comment section below. Anyway, guys, my name's Eric. This is Tech Inside, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>